In this video I'm going to be looking into e-paper displays, in particular using Android as the primary operating system that drives the display. Electronic paper, otherwise known as e-paper, or sometimes e-ink, is an interesting type of display technology. It's generally black and white, or grayscale, and very slow to update the contents of the screen yet has significant use cases, the main one being screens for ebook readers. E-paper screens look surprisingly like a printed page of paper. The Pebble watch, for example, used e-paper. E-paper seems well suited for watches, or at least seemed when the Pebble watch was around. Another potential use is status information displays. There are currently not many commercial products that use e-paper as info displays. However, there are many of these small e-paper displays available, which can be used with Arduino and other microcontrollers to build your own projects. Some of these e-paper displays even include a third colour. For example, black, white and red, or orange, or yellow. Hmm, only warm colours for some reason. I have one here, for example, that does black, white and red, with an example status display. The Applied Science channel did a great video on how e-paper works, including how the third colour works and some e-paper update speed hacks. One problem with building your own e-paper devices is the price. E-paper costs more than the equivalent liquid crystal sized screens, and e-paper gets really expensive as the screen size increases. There is a potential alternative to using bigger e-paper screens using cheap second-hand ebook readers and repurposing them to do new things. I don't mean using ebook reader screens directly because most manufacturers don't publish the specifications for interfacing to them. Instead, I'm suggesting soft modding the whole reader. Previously, I did a video about the Kobo Mini e-reader in which I did some simple soft mods to allow a few additional games and utilities. This is a good start but in that case there was a limited number of apps to expand functionality and I'm not looking to code my own from scratch. In this video I'm looking at more models of ebook readers that can be soft modded to access the Android operating system. This can open the reader devices up to thousands of app possibilities though generally e-readers will only have early versions of Android to work with and low-end CPU performance. Still, it should be possible to find apps to turn some e-readers into something else. Okay, the next e-book reader we're going to have a look at is this Sony here. And this one is the PRS-T1. We're currently running version 1.0.02 and various other numbers. I'm going to upgrade this to 1.0.05, even though there is a higher version. Uh, 1.0.07 which has problems with the USB and the Wi-Fi and doesn't allow as much flexible jailbreaking. Okay the update was successful and you know the whole thing seems a lot more responsive now. There we go 1.0.05 Okay, so the reading procedure seemed to have been successful. Everything looks fine. Now let's see what happens when we go home. Aha, there it is. We now have a new option. We can go to this launcher. That should get us into Android. There it is. Okay, we're now in Android. There's the inbuilt apps that we've got. Okay, we have Android settings. Now you'll see the display update is going a bit crazy running Android. Let's check the about. Okay, we have model number PRST1 and Android version 2.2.1. Okay, I'm going to get access to Android on the Nook here. One way I can do that is to root the system, but I'm going to use a different method. I have a micro SD card here with a custom recovery on it, clockwork mod. So 
I'm just going to put the card in there and simply restart the nook. Okay, let's see if we can start this up now. So we power on. And then hold two buttons and wait. Yep, it worked. We have Clockwork Mod installed into the internal memory. Okay, so with Clockwork Mod installed into the internal memory, I can now load a custom ROM onto this. There are quite a few to choose from. I've chosen the 1337 mod. It seems to be fairly complete and has most of the things that I want already added into it. It's going to save a lot of time for setting this up. Install zip from SD card. Okay. Choose zip. Now before I install the ROM, I'm going to do a ROM backup just in case. ROM backup tool done. I believe that's saved the backup to the SD card automatically. Okay, now let's install our new custom ROM. Choose zip from SD card and there it is, the Nook 1337 ROM. Installing update. All right, we'll let that go for a bit and see what happens. Okay, so to get past the online setup, we can hold this top right button and slide. And there we go, we've got a new button there called Factory. Press that. And so we get into a factory sort of a state, giving us various details about the device. Okay, but we need to then hold the button again and just tap here and a new button appears. Skip. Okay, there we go. We're now in the system. Okay, with the system accessible, we now go to the second part of the ROM flashing. So we'll power down and get back into Clockwork Mod Recovery. Okay, we're back in the Clockwork Mod Recovery, so let's go and install another zip from the SD card and choose which one. And so we're going to go Neuter Part 1. Yep, there we go, there it goes, and this will replace the Nook launcher with a, an Android style launcher. Okay, the ROM is starting up, and we'll see what the new launcher looks like. Now we don't enter our Google account yet, we skip this. Complete action using relaunch. All right, let's grant super user request to relaunch. Okay, we're in relaunch. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I have Android accessible on both of these devices now. The Sony was a little more challenging the root explorer file manager that was installed with the root didn't work I have managed to install ES file manager and that works okay but there's not very much memory to install apps at the moment and the Nook came up really well it's running a custom launcher called relaunch and there's lots of options available and I have been able to install some apps so if we bring up the apps page, we've got a large number of apps on here already. So the custom ROM on the Nook at the moment is Android 2.1, which is not too bad. I'm quite pleased with the progress so far in expanding the functionality of these two ebook readers. And these weren't very expensive. I think on eBay this was about $35 for the Sony and the Nook was an amazing $12 including shipping. 
So if you're prepared to look for a bargain, you can find these sorts of things. Now I did find a third device on eBay when I was looking for e-paper devices. And yes, this does have a full color OLED screen, which is not something we're looking for on a video about soft passive e-paper screens. But this is no ordinary phone. On the back, there is an e-paper panel, which if I unlock it, it's an e-book reader, it's an information panel. Oh, that's all it is so far. Another thing this phone can do is I can switch the main display to the rear e-paper panel. And then I've got Android running on e-paper. This is a fairly late version of Android at the moment compared to the ebook readers we've been looking at. Uh, yeah, we've got Android 4.4.3 and this can be upgraded to all the way to Android 6, I believe. There may be a custom ROM or two that allows that. But for now, let's have a look at uh, playing a video on an e-paper display. So I'll load up YouTube. So let's play a video on this e-paper screen. I'm loading a technology connections video here. And this is a really good video talking about e-paper or e-ink, specifically also on Android devices. And that frame rate is not too bad. We can see a lot of ghosting on the screen because it's not updating correctly. But I'm actually kind of impressed that an e-paper screen like this can play a video at all. Okay, so that's where I'm at. I've got Android accessible on these e-paper devices. I'm now actively looking for apps that I can run on these to make these useful. I'd like to mod the Yoda phone a bit more and make devices that run in an always-on state. So I hope to do more with e-paper, including these little displays that I've got and also using those to build something interesting with. Okay, so that's it. We're done for now. Thanks for watching.